Hi, I'm Bob Knoten. On this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, we're going to look at the ins and outs of the heart of the Jaguar V12 lubrication system, the oil pump. Dang it. Now the primary purpose of the oil pump should be obvious. It's the same in all engines, to provide the right volume of oil under pressure to the various engine bearing services. But it does a second really important thing too, in that it is ginormous. It provides way more oil than is necessary to supply oil to the bearings. It supplies enough oil to also kick the bypass valve open, and allow a large enough volume of oil to go through a cooler back to the pump in order to keep the oil cool. The problem with that is that if you are the type that likes to extend your oil change intervals, uh, this isn't going to like that at all. And so what happens is this begins to wear, but your oil pressure is going to be fine because it's a really big pump. The thing that's going to suffer is the amount of oil that goes through the cooler. And so that's what kills your engine. Don't be that guy. The first job we're going to do is to disassemble the oil pump. This fits over the end of the crankshaft, bolts to the front of the block. It's pretty simple to take it apart. First of all, make sure that your impact is turning in the right direction. And then it's just a matter of taking your hammer and lightly, there's a locating pin that pulls the two parts in proper registration with each other, like I read up there. And that's our pump. It's a kind of pump that's called an epicycloidal pump. It's the same sort of a pump that you've got in, a, uh, in an automatic transmission. And uh, it's a high volume pump. Remember I said in an earlier episode, this thing provides way more volume of oil than the bearings actually need so that you can have the bypass delivering oil to the cooler, which then routes the, uh, routes the excess oil back to the inlet of the pump. So now you can see here that we've got these two gears. And what I wanna do here is I want to make sure that I get these gears back together the way they came apart. So I'm going to clean off and I'm going to mark it like that. Now just inspecting this right away, you can see that we've got some, uh, some scratches that go around the perimeter here which is not, if you were to run your fingernail over them, there's just a very little bit of a, a problem, or not a problem, but there's some scratches there. <clears throat> and to be honest, this is normal. Uh, more of a telltale sign of an issue would be the back plate on this. And we can see that we've got a little bit of wear right here. This is common, and right here, got some scratches there just a, maybe a thousandth or two thousandths of an inch thick. Now what I could do to deal with this is to take that piece of aluminum uh, billet that I talked about a while ago that I had some 600 grit uh, wet or dry sandpaper contact cemented to. I could take and hand lap this out. In fact, that's probably what I'm going to do. Now this is an example of a pump that I would not consider putting back in the car. You can see that there's deep grooves that are worn into the backing plate where the where the two gears run against and there's a big trench that you can see that's worn in between the inlet and the outlet side of the pump and you know that there's going to be a lot of leakage uh, from one side to the other 
Uh, and you know, if, if, if it's this bad, if the, if the oil changes have been neglected so badly that this is worn the way it is, you know that the gears themselves are worn as well. So I've got other options here. Uh, this is one that I just kept around simply for demonstration purposes at some point. Mission accomplished. I'm not going to do anything to these gears except maybe maybe take a light pass on the wet or dry sandpaper with them just just to take any sharp edges. This is, I, you don't want to reduce the thickness of these because what will happen then is oil will bypass the size of the pump and you'll lose volume. So, uh, and if we take these out, there, just gotta break the suction. To get them out, we can see that the groove here that the gears fit in look excellent. So this pump, really all this pump needs is to be cleaned up like this pump on the other client's engine and stick it back together again. And this part of the project is done. Before you go to all the trouble of hand lapping the backing plate, uh, what you want to do is take some measurements here. There's a clearance dimension between the, uh, the driven gear and the housing, and also the thickness of the two gears relative to the depth of the cavity that they fit in will give you the clearance. So there's those things that need to be considered as well. So you can see I've got the backing plate lapped and Got almost everything out. Still have this thing right here. I'm not going to go to the, I mean, that's probably three or four thousandths of an inch, but I got the rest of the scratches out. It looks really good. I've already got the first pump together. So tomorrow I want to get all the stuff on the front of both engines. So here's the order of business today. Get all this stuff on those two engines. Now what we've got here is, first of all, the jack shaft, which serves to uh, it's a, it serves as an idler for the timing chain and also drives the distributor. Uh, we've got the the gears that go with those. We've got the the plates which control the end play, nuts and bolts. We've got the output tube from the pump. This end fits on the pump. That end goes to the block. We've got the supply tubes that have the pickups on the end that supply oil to the to the oil pumps. We've got the fittings here for the for the output from the pump and the input from the pump. In addition to the return from the oil cooler clamps, uh, we've got this stuff that goes on the end of the crank, which is the the drive sprocket for the oil pump, the timing chain drive sprockets, as well as a spacer, which also serves as a sealing service for the front crankshaft seal. And we've got the oil pumps here, and we've got the windage trays. So, got our work cut out for us today. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to mount the oil pump on the front of the engine. One thing we need to do prior to doing that, and that is to install the drive sprocket. Now, the first thing that you wanna make sure of is that you've got the woodruff keys in place. Uh, these I very seldom knock out of there because uh, they're really, really tight and they really need to be. Um, this one in the end here tends to fit a little bit looser, so I, so I take that out. It's a matter of grabbing it with a vice grip and wiggling it and it comes out. But these two usually are in there really tight so I don't bother with removing them. The first thing we want to do is to take the drive sprocket for the oil pump and get that installed in the crankshaft and make sure that the keyway is aligned with the keys because this thing does fit fairly tight on here.
and there we go. At this point, we can then take the oil pump, which it goes on here being the engines upside down. It goes on upside down. And remember, we filled this thing up with uh, assembly lube and some tacky red grease so that it's gonna start drawing oil right away. And we set it on like that and then we install the bolts And then of course these bolts get torqued down to their recommended value. They're pretty important bolts. <laughs>